Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to another brand new episode. Today's feature singer-songwriter Andrew Dahl. Andrew returns to talk about a brand new solo album. And uh, we get a little sneak peek. We play some live acoustic. We have a great time hanging out. and So hope you enjoy this one. I uh, do want to remind you, as always, Rock Paper Podcast is brought to you by Friendship Brewing Company in Wentzville, Missouri. Serving up all your craft beer needs. Over 25 rotating taps over there. And all kinds of delicious specials, uh, weekly and daily specials. They've got your uh, burgers and flatbread pizzas and salads and pretzels and uh, all kinds of tasty eats over there. And you got some great live music. You can come by on Thursdays. They do single bingo. And this Thursday, August, 20, uh, August 17th, will be Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. On uh, Friday, the August 18th, Jeff Walchhauser. Saturday, August 19th, Steve Kyle. And Sunday, Josh Littig. On, uh, and you've been hearing me talk all about it, but Friendship Brewing recently expanded, opening a second location in Flint Hill, Missouri, just outside Winsville. And they call on it Fly High. So come over to Friendship Brewing Fly High this weekend for some live music over there and you got uh josh littig on friday night at fly high august 18th august 19th buddy and whistle you can find the full music calendar beer menu and food menu at friendship brewing company.com get plugged in with them on your facebook and instagram for more info and come out and see the brand new fly high Uh, Try the Fly High Kitchen, a brand new food menu over there from uh, partnered up with some of the folks of Duke's Barbecue to bring a brand new experience over there. Uh, You got your same great beers, plus you can see the where the brewing happens at. They've got the tanks right there and it's just a really cool experience to see it all happening. Uh, Beautiful patio space, plenty of room to stretch out and uh, you got your Nice big stage for the bands there. So come experience the brand new Friendship Brewing in Flint Hill, Missouri. Again, everything at friendshipbrewingcompany.com. And tell them Shane sent you. If you need anything from me, feel free to reach out via email at rockpaperpodcast at gmail. Uh, Everything else at rockpaperpodcast.com. Hit me up on the socials. I would love to hear from you all. And with that out of the way, sit back, relax, and enjoy a brand new episode with Andrew Dahl. Um, podcast is kind of like a, it's like a radio show that's not on the radio. It's on, it's on the internet. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> that's also like my mom. Uh, it makes it sound more confusing, doesn't it? Uh, it sounds like this. This is Andrew Dahl, and you're listening to Rock Paper Podcast. Rock paper podcast. This is beat paper, paper covers rock, rock beats. This is Shane covers nonstop, never know what new kind of guests that he's got coming at you. Live and direct on the spot could be rock, folk, country, a hip hop, jazz. All kind of folks that he has could be an artist or a comedian to make you laugh on the rock paper podcast. Double decker fudge round rolling round. Shane coming at you live and direct from ground zero. He's your hero. He's your bestie. Rock Paper Podcast with Shane Presley. Rock Paper Podcast. Hey, everybody. Shane Presley here. Rock Paper Podcast coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri. Hanging out today with returning guest Andrew Dahl. Welcome back, man. Yeah, it's good to be back. This is uh, this is exciting. We got a uh, brand new record on the way, and um, but uh, what I, that's what I love about doing this show. And we kind of talked about it just hit before hitting record. Is just it's a good excuse to catch up with buddies. You know, we all get busy running around. Um, luckily, I've been I've seen you around a couple times recently, and mm-hmm. which uh, 
that's maybe where this kind of got started. The topic uh, comes up. We should link up together again soon. And uh, so that's what we're doing today, man. We're getting sit down and catch up with an old friend and uh, talk about life and music and everything else. So appreciate you uh, being here today. Well, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, thanks. And thanks for having me over to your uh, your beautiful home here. Yeah, um, thank you. So we uh, what uh, was that Shania? Last it time was I Shania saw Twain. Yeah, yeah. You were on the shuttle, I think, back to the yeah. casino. I was trying yeah. to get uh, that. Took forever. That was kind of a um, mess. But that place is a nightmare. Yeah, it's like every time. Uh, I I think we went to three shows that week. We went to Shania Twain. We went to the the Dead and Company, yeah, and we went to Tyler Childers, and it's a good week. It was a good week, but that venue drives me nuts. Yeah, every time I see that somebody's at the venue, it almost deters me because to get out of that parking lot or to get on the shuttle mm-hmm. is another. You have to add another two hours to your night. Yeah. So I mean, the concert ends at ten. You're like, I'm getting home at like one o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of. I don't know why they haven't quite figured it out. And even the last time I went down there, like they. They had us reroute out of it out a different way, and I still wasn't any better. But I'm like, you know, just uh, I just thought it was weird. Like I've been going down there for for years and years, and they've always done it the same. And then that time they did it differently, and I'm like, but still not any better. But yeah, yeah. they need to figure something out. They need to like an underground railroad system or something. <laughs> right. I have no clue because it's in such a bad spot. Yeah, for traffic, and there's like no way around it. It's just like city planning was not done well. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think it, I don't know that uh, it was ever really anticipated uh, to be uh, an amphitheater back there when they built all that. It was just happened to be that it was a big open area there, there and, and they just uh, there. a yeah. dead part of town where it was they could get loud and not really bother residents and stuff. And I don't know, maybe something like that. But either way, it's not exactly ideal. But um, it reminds me, uh, we went to see. Uh, uh, went down to uh, Daytona area <clears throat> for uh, vacation a little while back. And then we drove to Orlando to see Chili Peppers one night. And as we were like pulling into town, uh, it started like storming like real bad. Like it was like an outdoor soccer stadium where the venue was at. It was like in the middle of a neighborhood. So all the streets going in are just regular neighborhood streets and everybody's like coming from all sorts of different directions trying to get into this parking lot. And then they shut off the parking lot because of the storm. They said, we're not letting anybody in until whether we're going to postpone the show until after the storm clears. So we're all like sitting in these neighborhood streets and there it starts raining like crazy and the streets start flooding and people's are posting pictures on Twitter, like let us into the parking lot before we get flooded out here. Cause uh, you know, car water's up to the bottom of our cars already and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so it was mass chaos. And I was just like, again, I was, this is not exactly a ideal, uh, parking, you know, trying to get, you know, 15, 20,000 people in and out of this uh, place at, you know, but, uh, yeah. yeah it, and they're like, what do you do? Yeah. Like when it's like built around neighborhoods and office buildings, yeah. like, what do you do? I don't know, but it, it worked out. We, we had a great time that night and everything went on showing on uh and chili peppers crushed it they mm-hmm. it was a fun show uh i missed uh thundercat opened up i missed their uh his set but uh yeah it was it was a good night though but uh yeah i don't know man it's crazy uh somehow people think about they do, it seems like sometimes some of that stuff's just a kind of a a forethought you know it's like we'll, we'll just put this big old thing here we'll figure it out later you know yeah or but, or maybe it's like not <laughs> yeah I don't know if maybe the amphitheater wasn't as big of a deal and yeah. they built all those buildings and then now it's like a huge deal and they're like, yeah, we're screwed. But, uh, I don't know. That Shania show was kind of weird for me, man. I don't know. It yeah. was so weird. Yeah. It was so weird. I like her and I, I like, I, I saw her several years, like probably five years ago with Stacy at the, at enterprise. And I liked that show way better. Like, I don't know. I had a lot of issues with, uh, he's all right okay yeah. if you hear any background noise we got a special <laughs> guest in the house tonight yeah my dog's making he's chewing on his ball uh, he's going to town over yeah. there but uh that was a it was an odd show but i'm but i don't know it was it was strange the the it was like aliens were taking over <laughs> right they were taking over the saloon and then at first i was like this is really weird i don't know how, how i feel about it and then they kind of 
Then the aliens started like to burn the saloon down. <laughs> then they took over the saloon and had their own alien saloon. All right. And then they took you into the saloon. And I was like, oh, we're going to see them like transform the inside of the saloon and have like an alien saloon party. And it, they ne- they didn't bring they didn't do anything. All right. Like they brought you into the saloon and it was all torn apart from the aliens. And then they didn't do anything. I was like, I'm invested. Now right. what? I was like, I want to know what happens to the aliens. Like they didn't tell us what happened. Yeah. And I think we missed the first part of the show where she does like a wardrobe change. I didn't know if she was supposed to be an alien. I didn't, she did this wardrobe change and I was like, we were getting drinks. We were a little late. And, um, cause getting into that place is a nightmare yeah. too. Like the line to get in is like forever long as well. And, um, so I missed that and I'm like, I'm so lost, but I'm invested in whatever story is happening here. Yeah, right. <laughs> and they just like cut it off at one point and like, it never kept going. Like the aliens didn't leave. They came, they came, but they didn't leave. You didn't see them leave. I don't know. I was, I was lost. Yeah. But, we had a great time. Yeah. She, it was still a great show. It was, um, it was not how I remember Shania Twain, but it was a great show. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I don't know. There was, uh, there was just some bizarre choices that I, I, I don't know that I would have made, um, you know, but people, other people liked it and uh, I'm glad they all had a good time. And, but so I was just, it was funny to run into you that night. But I, that seems to be the case. We we pat, cross paths a lot of shows. Uh, mm-hmm. I remember it was, it's been a the first while. show we ran into each other was um, the Way Back Point Fest, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was thinking about uh, also the up at Roots and Blues. Uh, year yeah, ago. Roots and Blues. Yeah, well, that was like 2018. Yeah, that was several years ago now. But 2019. It was, was 2019 because it was the year. Um, it was the year before John Prine died. Yeah. So we got to see John Prine there. Mm-hmm. And then I saw John Prine at the Peabody in the end of 2019. And then he died in the beginning of 2020, I think March of 2020. Yeah. So that was crazy. Yeah, man. But I was just, uh, it's fun to bump into you at all these shows around the, mm-hmm. never know where we'll cross paths and stuff. But uh, I'm kind of a. Uh, I always of, look for you. Yeah. Like right. Whenever I'm at concerts, I yeah. always look for you. <laughs> you never know, man. I might, I'll be, uh, I'm always around. Mm hmm. Never know where I'll we're show both up. tall, so yeah, like, sure, it's easy to see each other. Yeah, foot above everybody else. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, I just kind of look above everybody. I'm like, oh, that's Shane, <laughs> right? I'll usually find you. Yeah, that, there's uh, been some. There's some been some places I see you afar, and I just can't get to you. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I don't. Uh, it is kind of funny to me. Like, I try not to stand out. You know, there's some of it I can't help, but I I try to just be an everyday dude. You know. That's how just my approach. I, I I feel like uh if I had like I get a lot of comparison to like uh Beetle Bob and oh, stuff. Yeah. Just because like he a, goes you're to, a St. Louis character. Because yeah. he goes to all these shows and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think if I had like a thing like Beetle Bob, people probably would know me more, but also like I, I don't that's not what I'm looking for. I mean like, you have your band t shirts, you're always wearing a band t shirt. Oh yeah, sure. I mean yeah, I mean, but you got the little Debbie thing going yeah. on. Yeah, <laughs> you're a character in yourself. Yeah, sure. but I'm not. A you're big, not. Uh, you're not a Beetle Bob character. Yeah, I'm not for a big sure. front row dancing. Uh, no, no, not moment. at all. Not at all. But you are like a staple, and like you, you have a brand yeah. for sure. I'd rather just kind of blend into the crowd. And didn't we talk? You like to sing at the top of your lungs, right? Oh, and like, so the people next to you can right, hear yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, that's my move usually. <laughs> that's what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. <laughs> I'll record the whole thing and I'll sing it real loud. You record it on your phone and sing really loud. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you like to do. I see you do that every time. Yeah. That's my <laughs> move, man. That's funny. Well, uh, that's being tall is tough at shows. I don't, I mean, right. Oh, yeah. Because like I like good seats. And so I like to be in the pit when real close. Cause I don't get to go to many shows. Cause I'm usually playing gigs. But when I do, I'm like, I want to be close. And then I'm six, eight. So you know, I'm all, I always feel bad about the people behind me. Yeah. So I try and blend in, but you can only blend in so much. Right. And so I feel bad about the people behind me. And I'm always like, you know, it's, it's, it, I try and get there early so that they're, they're prepared. That this guy's in front of me, you know, and, um, I always feel bad, but I, I'm always like, I always want to just look at them and be like, you're really angry, but like you're behind a tall guy right now, but I'm behind an, I'm in front of an angry person at every show. <laughs> <laughs> you're you, they, one show you're behind a tall guy i'm in front of an angry person at every single show and so i try and make friends with people and be like can, can you see and move and 
you know, if I'm with Tiffany, I try and have her stand in front of me, you know, yeah. that way it's like we're, we leave a whole spot open. But, um, has it ever, uh, become a problem? Like, have you ever had any issues because of it all? Uh, um, you know, it's, I feel like I can, I, there's like some foresight mm -hmm. into whether it's going to be a problem based on what band it's going to be. Right. Because there's a lot of bands that I feel like just have such a good vibe that people, I'm like, I'm never worried about it. And there's other bands who have less of like, um, not, I wouldn't say it's not a good vibe. I would just say it's not as strong of like a community vibe. And then I'm a little more worried about things, you yeah. know? I uh, went to, uh, well, I bring it up cause I went to see the urge in Columbia live on uh, ninth street outside of, uh, the blue note. And, um, I got there early cause I wanted to get some Shakespeare's pizza before the show and, and cut and we ended up like hanging out like during sound check. And then I got right up on the fence for the show. And, um, so I'm up there and some girl like taps me on the shoulder, you know, like before the urge goes on or something. And she's asked to get in front of me so she could see. And I was like, yeah, okay. No problem. Like, so I let her in front of me and. Mm -hmm. Where do you stop it? Well, I mean, that's the thing. I, yeah, I can't let everybody, but so I let her and uh, maybe a friend or whatever. And then like uh, a little bit later, this guy comes up to me and like uh, says something uh, uh, about me. Um, I guess that was his girlfriend or something like that. And said so, and like was accusing me. Uh, he said, you're looking at my girlfriend's tits or something like that. And like, and starts like getting physical with me. And like, I, and by this point, like there's already like, the mosh pit going on at the urge show and i got to sh shove him into the mosh pit and then, like he uh and he ends up like getting and i mean that's not like me at all i don't get i don't put my hands on people i don't get physical he got swept away yeah. in the mosh pit and then he ends up pissing off somebody else and then he ends up getting thrown out and i thought that was just perfect uh you know like the, karma yeah that's funny but i was like i'm not you know it just was funny that uh he was out he was out to to start trouble. yeah that's because he started trouble with you and he's gonna start right. trouble with the next person yeah but uh my friends all were cracking up because they were like we never seen you get angry like i'm like well you know just i'm trying to have a good time here don't, <laughs> don't yeah know. i mean when i'm going to a concert i'm like in such a good mood yeah right like there's very few things the only the only recent concert that i've had issues with was jason isbel did two nights right outside chicago earlier this year and we bought tickets the first night. Um, Tiffany bought tickets for my birthday, front row. And uh, so we went and we got there early the first day, which was funny actually, because I freaked out because I ran out of gas getting there. So I have like an electric hybrid car that does gas and electric. And I wasn't paying any attention. I'm just talking away, just so excited. And my car just ran out of gas. And uh, I was just like, I didn't even notice because I was just talking the whole time. I'm a talker. And, um, so I was panicking. We finally get there in time, see the show. The first night was great. The problem was, is that they sold out the first night so fast that they opened up a second night and the second night did not sell well. Hmm. And so good and bad things happened where we're on the way back. And, um, we had given tickets away to that show the first night, Tiffany and I, cause we accidentally bought two sets. So we were able to actually give, uh, we went and found this couple who was an aw like two awesome people they had their jason's bull shirts on they had their um they had their merch from the merch shop like in their in their um laps and we we're like those are the people because we couldn't sell these tickets for Ticketmaster. i'm not going to get started on that wouldn't let us sell the tickets for even what we paid for them because or they they would only sell them for what we paid for them but they were already selling those tickets for lower than what we were selling them for they wouldn't let us try and sell them at the same price so we're like, we'll just give away. Like it's good karma. You know, that's the best situation. So we give it to them and they were so excited. So they got third row. Um, so we're on our way back and good karma strikes because the show wasn't completely sold out. People are selling them. We ended up getting the second night for like $130 a ticket, which is extremely good price for front row tickets. And since he's my favorite artist, we're like, are we doing this? Yeah, we're doing it. So the second night we go, but I had to go to work. Um, I'm a graphic designer during the day and I had to go to work in the day for a little bit. And we, we head off and we get there halfway through the first song and people are so mad. Um, like I can see their faces as I'm like 
scooching into the seat halfway through the first song. Well, we waited till the song was over. He was playing 24 frames. And I sit down and I look back and the whole auditorium is sitting. And I can't stand when people sit at, con- I can't stand it. Like if you want to sit at a concert, fine. But there's this culture, right? Where like if everyone's sitting, nobody wants to be the first ones to stand. But I'm not going to stand at a, I'm not going to sit at a Jason Isbell concert. And so I, I look at Tiffany. I said, next song, chorus hits, we're standing. I don't care. So I stand up. She stands up when um, this chorus hits in the second song. It just, from the back of the auditorium, it just starts raining. Down in front. Oops. Sit down. Sit down. And I'm like, we're not. We're not going to do this because I guarantee you everyone else wants to stand. Nobody bought tickets to stand, to sit here. There's just something wrong. Like the people who bought tickets that night bought them because they were cheap. Mm-hmm. They weren't like a lot. You could tell there were some like massive Jason Isbell fans and you could tell there's people that bought them because they were cheap because they were going for like dirt cheap at like when the show was starting because um, people were trying to like just sell their tickets. And so we were standing there. The second song, the guy behind me is like complaining so much. It's like my leg hurts. So we give him Tiffany's seat. <laughs> we're like, well, Tiffany's standing in front of me. You can sit, stand there. And so he gets in for the front seat, like in her seat. And then, but we turn around and half the auditorium was standing. <laughs> like all these people wanted to stand. They were just waiting for the first people to stand. But when we left, people were just so mad at me. Like they were just so mad. Like the, all the people around me, except for one kind lady was like, she's like, I could tell you knew every word, every song, like you, you deserved to stand and enjoy your show. And I was like, thank you. I mean, I hope that everybody else who stood enjoyed it too. It was just the people, there was like three groups around me that just were so unhappy. And I'm like, you're at a concert, just enjoy it. You know, we're standing against a stage. So it's like, when you stand that close, it's not as big of a deal because the stage, it comes up to like my chest, you know? So they're not looking over me that much. Jason's standing at like his feet are on my chest. (laughs) And so, like, it's not that big of a deal, but people, like, that night was just a bad vibe. Like, it wasn't, because the chick- tickets were so cheap, mm-hmm. it wasn't, like, all his, like, you know, like, all of his best fans, like, biggest fans, I guess, right. you know. I went to a show one night at Del Mar Hall, and I, after the show, I was looking up, Aaron Ratier was a opener that night, and I was looking up some of his stuff, and I think I was trying to follow him on TikTok, and then it, like, the, one of the first things that popped up was somebody's video on TikTok from right behind me. And it made me laugh so hard that all you see is like this out black outline of like, you can't even see Aaron on stage. You just see the back of my head and everything. Yeah, that's funny. And uh, I laughed so hard when I first saw that. I was just like, that's, it's perfect. And that's I was awesome. like, I feel, I felt kind of bad, but I'm also like, Hey, look, it's general admission. Like I can't do anything about that. Exactly. But, I mean, um, you but, can't help how tall you are. That's why yeah. I always say like that person had one show behind you. Yeah. All right. So it was just funny to me, but you know, it's tough out there being, being tall guys at concerts. And <laughs> it is. And I feel so bad for, like it, when you're an empathetic person too. Right. I feel bad the whole time. I'm like, I'm like slouching. And then my, yeah. my back usually hurts. Cause I'll be like up against the rail, like trying to like slouch. And I'm yeah. like, later I'm like, the whole body hurts. Cause I was trying to be as small as possible. <laughs> All right. Um, but it's, so, oh yeah, I totally get it. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about some of your music. We've been talking a lot about everybody else's, but, uh, Oh yeah, that's what we're for. Yeah. We, that's what we're here for today. And we got, uh, a brand new record on the way. And, uh, this is your, um, solo debut and uh, due out on August 28th of 2023. I think it's, uh, we actually, I sent you a message just the other day and it's kind of wild to think about it all. Like, you know, how we, um, we went, the last time you appeared on this show was in the uh, fall of 2019, going into winter and I think there. And then um, I think the episode posted on um december 3rd which was this happened to be the same day my mom passed which i i first sent you that i was like it was kind of you know it's one of those things it's kind of weird to think about now in retrospect like what you were doing that morning Mm -hmm. of you know kind of thing before you knew your life was going to change um and then the by time you guys got around to playing that show your album release party in march was three days before the shutdowns and the pandemic of March of 2020. Uh, so then I shelved everything for everybody and uh, 
So again, another, you know, it's like you guys are riding that high and right into a, you know, world shutdown. So, um, you know, just kind of a crazy coincidence is like how for all that for us, like, so it was kind of, uh, you know, interesting to look back at it now three years later and, and where we're, where we're at and stuff. But, uh, um, but anyway, so that was our last appearance. Yeah. And, uh, when you sent me that text, that like gave me chills. I was like, yeah. holy cow. Yeah. It was right. just, it's kind of, uh, especially with your, with your mom and everything. It was like, yeah, that was like, that gave me chills. That was like, yeah, I didn't know it was that day. Like until I was like looking at the dates when I on my website and stuff, but it was, uh, so that's kind of, uh, surreal, you know, just, uh, didn't really think about it until that moment. And I was looking back at it and I was like, man, that's kind of wild. Like to, you know, but you know, could have been doing anything, but it's like, it just like, you know, it's just like, I knew obviously I was, you know, mom had been sick for a whole long time and it could have been any day, but it was just like, just kind of strange to think about what happened that, that day. It anchors you to it. Like right. it, it like gives you, it makes it more real because yeah. you have an anchor. Yeah. But, um, but anyway, yeah, I was like, I was telling him, man, I was like, there's, there's probably a country song in there somewhere <laughs> if we uh, sit down and write that. So. I'll I'll leave that for Jason Aldean. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I agree. There's there's something in there. But for uh, sure, I guess you you uh, read that the band parted ways. Uh, and, yeah. During the pandemic, and uh, we kind of go in different directions, and yeah. So I actually miss all them a lot. Yeah. That was such a fun group of guys and girls, and um, I do miss them all. I mean, Brent, Ashley, Andrew Manger, Josh, and Audrey. And it was so fun and it was like, it was such a great way because I haven't been doing this long. Hmm. It was such a good group of people to like start this journey with. And I'm so happy it was with those people who were very patient with me. I'm not a, I'm not an easy person to deal with. <laughs> and they were very patient with me and, and they grew with me and I grew with them and I do miss it. Um, but COVID did give me a chance to, um, reflect and understand that I wasn't ready to lead a band. I wasn't ready to be the leader of something that I didn't understand. You know, I was trying to do this thing that, um, I thought I had some sort of understanding on. And then when I really thought about it, I was like, I don't only doing music at that point for a couple of years. I think it was only like two years when we started the band. Like I'd been like playing and singing for two years. Like I was that new to music that, um, I was like, I don't, I don't, if I can't understand how to talk to them and tell them what I want, how do I expect to be able to have a band where I'm getting the sound I want? Yeah. And so that's when I decided I was going to, you know, kind of go off on this journey of just playing a bunch of stuff solo for a while and understanding what my sound was, what I really did want, getting better at singing, getting better at playing guitar, um, really understanding music. And then that way someday, you know, I have a, I do have a studio band on this record which wasn't was another awesome group of people everybody involved in this project was uh was awesome as well um same thing very patient with me um but you know it's it's like i'm still trying to find that sound and i i with this record i think there was a ton of growth and i think it put me on a good path for the future you know i'm i'm excited about this it's kind of a project that's include songs from really early on that i was writing um up until one of the songs was written while we were in the studio. It was like the day before one of the days in the studio. Uh, cause we spent a good while in there, but it was like, I wrote it one night and then the next day I brought it in and said, Hey guys, we're playing this song. And everybody looked at me like I was crazy. And that ended up being Rolling Stone. And, um, and so it's just kind of like, I, st- I miss those times having that core group of people that you could look at and be like, all right, we're doing this. Like let's play shows and and we're all kind of on the same page. I don't have that support anymore when it comes to like having a band, you know, and I do miss that and I miss those people, but I do feel like I, I put myself in a better place that when I'm ready for that again, I will be a better leader yeah, and be able to, to lead a band in, in the direction that I actually want to go in. And if somebody that people could follow and not, <laughs> probably look at me and be like, yeah, are you sure you want to do this here? I don't know if you know what you're doing. And I didn't. So, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, I, um, but I think all that's learning, you know, it's like, like I said, this is all the whole business with bringing 
pretty brand new to you at the time. And so, uh, you know, I hope that having some friends there to support you to find your way to get started and, uh, you know, and then like kind of whether, uh, you know, even good or bad, you learn what you like and what you don't like and mm -hmm. what we're, what we can keep learning from that and growing. And, um, but yeah, you're here, uh, now with a brand new, uh, solo album and, uh, your debut as a solo artist and simply, uh, self-titled, uh, mm -hmm. Andrew Dahl. So, uh, you recruited a bunch of, uh, really talented friends of ours around the city to, mm -hmm. uh, help back you on this record, like you mentioned. And you, um, yeah, let me give a shout out to them. Yeah. I, I mean, they were very instrumental in making this, this happen. Um, I've got Rick Wagner's playing on acoustic guitar, acoustic lead, and he plays the banjo on Dead Men Walking. Um, Drew Lance plays percussion and does a lot of background vocals. Um, Andrew Manger, who was actually with me with Andrew and the Dolls, um, plays um, bass, he plays some violin, and he plays some viola. Um, Keegan O'Brien plays the electric lead on the songs that have that. Um, I've got Jake Brookman, who's an awesome cellist, um, doing all the cello parts. And then, um, John Brighton from, um, old salt union. He's yeah. on, um, he's on two of the, two or three of the tracks, three of the tracks. He's on, um, fell in love in a dive bar on fiddle, um, freight train and, um, rolling stone. So it's, I was, you know, incredibly happy to work with these guys and it's, from all these bands that I respect, you know, um, and I was just happy that they all agreed to, to work with me and, and be part of the project. Yeah. And all recorded with, uh, Jason. Is that right? Yeah. Jason. That's all horse. That's all horse. So McIntyre, yeah, Jason, Jason was in there with us the whole time. Tiffany, my girlfriend, she's in there. Um, she was an instrumental part because we actually did the album. We actually did three songs to start off the album at first. And, it was the case where I didn't know, I didn't go into it knowing, understanding what I wanted. And, um, it took her to look at me and say, that's not what you want. And I, I, it was like, wow, you're right. So we spent like three days in the studio working on, uh, three different songs to then just completely scrap them and start over fresh. And, um, and it, it paid off. It really did. Cause I look back at those and there's something to them. They're great tracks, but they're not, they weren't my sound. Mm -hmm. And so everybody there, that was part of that project um, was meant to be there. And I'm, I'm very thankful for all of them. Yeah, man. Yeah. I was just telling a story the other night, but I don't know, kind of, I just, it was really an interesting story to me, but I was just watching that, uh, uh, um, wham documentary on Netflix. Uh, and I don't know if you know much about them, but they, they had that, careless whisper song is like an early demo <laughs> yeah. and i guess like they did a version of it and and then they it just never like they took it to a rec uh some kind of record label and they were like no it's that's trash get out of here and like but i held on to it and um and then like they said with some kind of big producer at the time engineer who did like records for Ray Charles and Aretha Franklin and stuff. And then they, but they just didn't have that sound. It wasn't what they were looking for. It wasn't. Um, and, uh, so, uh, eventually, uh, uh, what's, uh, blinking on his name now, the main, main guy from wham, whatever. Uh, I'm so bad with names. I wouldn't yeah, know. I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, but anyway, he had this, you know, he heard how this song was supposed to be, and ended up producing it all himself and which became what we know as the single um and everything else like so that just goes to show a lot of like you know people this you can have the most talented people around you but for whatever reason it's not clicking you know something mm -hmm. and it takes some your vision to you know finally get it to where it's supposed to be like right. the, i believe this is how this is supposed to be and uh you know and sticking with it, you know, making, seeing it through to, to getting that, even if it takes telling these super talented people, no, well, that's not the right sound. Right. And, uh, you know, just believing in yourself that, Hey, like I believe this is how it's supposed to be. So. Yeah. And I'm, and I, I do think there'll still be some, 
evolving and growth, but I'm, I'm, I am very happy with how this, this pro this project and this album turned out and I'm yeah. excited to share it. And I'm, I still listen to them and I listen to some of the parts, um, that these musicians put on them and I'm like, I'm so lucky, you know, I'm, that I had these guys and, um, there's some solos and stuff from like, Oh, like, yeah, that's awesome. Like, yeah. and I'm, I get excited. So if, you know, it's hard to get excited about your own stuff, but when, when I hear it and I'm, I'm getting excited about their solos and stuff, I'm like, there's something, there's, there's something to the sound. So yeah. I'm hoping everybody else enjoys it. Let's, uh, let's start with one. We wanted to kind of debut a new single out there. Um, but, uh, this may be one you've already heard some, in some the people past, already know, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, kind of, a maybe you have a new take on it, but this is a song called freight train and you, uh, what, what we, uh, what was the date for the, it'd be released as a single. So this one is, um, this is going to be, we're in the future, right? Right. So this will be coming out Monday. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> The future is hard. Yeah. August fourteenth, I think. The August fourteenth. Okay. Yeah. For uh, two two weeks before the whole album uh, drops. There we go. Um, but uh, yeah, man, this was uh, f it was fun to hear this arrangement on it, and uh, you know, a little different take on the song. And um, what was uh, what was kind of? Can you take me through that a little bit of the the thought uh, process behind choosing to to have release a reimagined version of this song? Yeah. So I've, so there's actually been what one, two, three versions that I've posted before because it was throughout real early, like I said, going back to, um, being a very new musician. Um, I put it, uh, the first album or the first song single I've ever put out was freight train and it was a great version. My, my buddy, Nick Blackburn, um, was the sound engineer for it and, and, um, mix and mastered it. And it sounded great. People loved it, but I, I'm so off pitch and I'm like, I'm, I'm doing an okay job. Like I try and give myself grace for the early days. And I only recently took that version off in preparation for this new one because it was still my number one stream song. And it, because it had this poppy banjo lick to it. Um, we lost that banjo lick when we did it with Andrew and the dolls and it became more of this like rock tune, which was weird for a song called freight train. So even though Andrew Do and the Dolls had their its own sound um, that I still respect and enjoy in a lot of ways, um, I try to do it as a solo with the the solo EP with um, oh I did it with Rick Ragnar actually the acoustic um, live from the Boom Room as an acoustic with two people and I like that version that's that's a good version Rick sounds amazing on it he's a crazy good flat picker. Um, and then, but it was like time to finally like give it the time and the thought it, it like really deserved as sort of like an Americana, um, blue grassy, um, like country tune. And I'm, I am very happy with the way this, this version turned out. It's, it's got that, it's got the fiddle on it. It's got the banjo lick. It's got, it, it's what a, a song called freight train in the Americana, um, songwriter, category should should be and I, i'm very happy with it this is this is finally this will be it yeah. <laughs> normal versions of freight train <laughs> yeah i know you got your reasons for leaving but baby change if you could only believe it thought of you as god me a thinking I'm gonna hop onto this train alone Help you find your way back home Yeah, I think I just head on into town And find the freight train headed westbound Hop aboard it, sit on down Ride that train into the blue Till I find my way to you Can't you see I'm on this freight train headed Headed west out of our same rooms Got a one-way ticket back to pass And I'm hopping state lines And I ain't never coming back without you I would I'll have a 
have myself a look around Cause I heard L.A. is a crazy town There's so many people walking around But I'll ask them all if I have to As long as I find my way to you And I imagine you'll be at a bar somewhere now Spot your blue eyes in your long blonde hair I stroll up to you, pull up a chair, convince you to come home with me. May not be so easy. Can't you see I'm on this freight train? Yeah. Head you west out of all St. Louis. Got a one way ticket, begs packed. And I'm hopping state lines. And I ain't never coming back without you. an eye out for the remix uh coming soon uh yeah what do we call it the reimagined yeah, remix right. yeah just uh reimagined put, a, put a, some a rapper on it uh for the remix of well, i do need to get a rapper so if there's any yeah. st louis rappers who would like to um to um work with me you know, uh that uh let's talk you mentioned the live at the boom room that uh with brian yeah uh, brian's awesome um, he so check out that video on uh, youtube and stuff blip blap video yeah he did he ended up doing i think we did f- four or five songs yeah yeah and that was awesome session like that guy's so talented yeah like i i i first saw one of his videos i was like who is doing these videos man this guy's like that it looks amazing mm-hmm. and it's funny because like um i expected because of the quality he was putting out I expect to show up to a studio, like a big studio with like, you know, it's huge production. And we go down to his basement and he has all fit up, set up and like it's, he's got all set up in a really small, like compact area, which is awesome. Cause it like, it works. I just like the way it looks and like the quality. I was like, this guy's, yeah. you know, big budget. And then I show up and I'm like, this is awesome. Cause I love grassroots stuff. I love people that are just like, cause that's how I, I got started. And those, all the people that I really respect have started in that way where it's just like, you just you make it work and that guy is like he's so talented i, I can't say enough about him yeah. yeah yeah i saw like a, a vi, uh like a <laughs> what i don't know whatever uh the sheet from that day and like he had everybody bo- like booked mm-hmm. every 10 15 minutes or whatever it was everybody come in and do their song or two and then got them stacked right on top of each other and like uh it was just funny to me like the how uh professional and efficient inefficient yeah and but also like you know he's the stacked lineup i mean there's all sorts of 
St. Louis greats were coming in that day and stuff. Yeah, so. there was so many people. It was like a, such a good crowd to be um, in the mix of. Yeah. We ended up doing, Rick and I were on a night that no one was there. So I didn't get to experience okay. that. But um, yeah, I, 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 with how efficient he was and how everything f- like just ran really well, I, um, I imagine like he just had that like regimented yeah. so well. Yeah. But yeah, big shout out to uh, Brian and Blip Blep. You need to go hit subscribe and get to learn a little bit more about some other St. Louis music on there. Um, but uh, yeah, man, let's. Uh, <clears throat> we did do some live uh, jams here today at your house, and uh, I thought these were a lot of fun to to get your uh, take on some of these. And um, maybe let's start with uh, "Dead Man Walking." This is a uh, title or the. Uh, track one on the record mm-hmm. and Even the first single released yeah and the first single and you uh we kind of got talking about it um and uh it's a it's a great soon and um Give, like, tell me what you really think I, I love the song man it's really like i it's very um um like cinematic to me like i don't know that's the way my brain works a lot of like as i listen to songs i start kind of picturing music videos and stuff and like i just like kind of uh you know obviously thinking of dead man walking and and the, the sounds that or you guys are producing to go with it it just kind of lends itself to naturally like kind of this uh you know kind of walking his prisoner into a you know jail or whatever you know something like that like this old dirt trail and you know sort of thing and uh, i actually get that feedback a lot yeah I mean, <laughs> like it just from- like it just Still. Here in the track or like even live. Yeah. So if anybody knows anybody on the produ- like the yeah. production team for Yellowstone. All right, yeah. <laughs> so it just uh feels good. I love this kind of darker uh Americana kind of side to I mean, this is um, you know, some of my favorites kind of telling I've that water. So always loved the darker side of things. Right. And and all all the people I respect, um, that I sort of that that got me on this track, John Prine and and Johnny Cash and Blaze Foley and Jason Isbell. They all have these dark songs, and um, I had a couple early on that still have some some great things to them, like um, Murder Ballad and some of the other ones that I originally wrote. But this was the first one I think was like a a good um, packaged product, you know, yeah. for that like darker sound. Well, I've had rough nights And I've woke up still drunk Way too many times Shaving these years off The sweet life of mine But it's alright And I've got good friends As good as any other My fists are flying they carry my ass home when the night ends If I'm not conscious Well, shit, it's the fair Run as fast as you can Devil's calling We're dead men walking Come hell or high water Put your fence on the fire Devil's calling I quit drinking Said I sober up Until this weekend I'm headed out again With all those heathens What was I thinking? Well, shit, is the fair Run as fast as you can Devil's calling We're dead men walking Come hell or high water Put your friends from the fire Devil's calling you said i mean we kind of talked about the uh the idea of it being a, more of a, a shorter song yeah so there was like so when i wrote the song i sent it out 
I have like a sh- short list of people. There's like Tiffany, my older brother who, who's been a big supporter of me since the beginning, even though like he was like the other day he admitted, he was like, you used to suck, bad. <laughs> but I just supported you. And he's like, and now I'm, you know, and now he like will stream a lot of my stuff and be listening. And his wife's always like, he does listen to your stuff. <laughs> he's probably one of your biggest fans. So I send him my stuff. And there's a couple other like close friends that I send stuff to. And the first feedback was, it's just so short. You need more to it. And um, so I messed around with other verses and stuff. But my whole concept for this was that there's that line there where it's like shaving the years off your life. And it is the intro track to this album. And I liked that. And the other thing I did was the abrupt ending that people don't like at first. And then I let people listen to it for a while. And then people are like, oh, I get it. I kind of get it. You know, there's an abrupt ending and it's short. And so you and I were talking earlier. I mean, there, it's the title track or the not title track, the um, intro track to this album. But it could end up being a reimagined somewhere like if I if I want to. But um if I, if I finally find out what needs to fit there, but I just thought it was worth sharing and I liked the concept of it being real short and sweet, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, it, it works for sure. Like I, uh, I just feel like it felt so good to me that I would have liked for another verse or, you know, I, I could have listened to that for a couple more minutes, you know, mm-hmm. kind of thing. It just felt right. And, um, but yeah, man, there's, it's all artist interpretation. I mean, like, it's always fun to hear what you guys put out. But, uh, you know, that's my opinion. That's my take on it. Like, I, not that there's any right or wrong. I don't I don't know anything about it. I just as a fan. If there is, I'm probably wrong. <laughs> and I accept that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I accept that, like, some of the decisions I make artistically are probably not the right decisions. But at least I can claim they're artistic. Yeah. I'm always kind of like a, of the... Uh, mentality though like do especially doing this podcast out a lot of them probably run longer than people care to listen to that's what i don't want you know it's like all right we did that with andrew and the dolls like i think the the and that was my doing i have no one to blame myself because i was putting like too many instrumentals in. i was putting too much time in between things i was extending things i think they're like the media of like the time in, in those tracks is like five minutes. Nobody wants to listen to a song yeah. from a <laughs> from an up and coming songwriter for five minutes. Yeah. They'll listen to a John Prine song for five minutes. They'll listen, you know, they'll listen to a Beatles song for five minutes. No one's listened to an Andrew Dahl song for right. five minutes. <laughs> I know this for a fact. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, um, uh, you know, I kind of come from the mentality though. If you don't like it, you can always skip to the next one. So, um, but you never know what that might find and uh, might find its audience that it does people that do respond to mm. some of those longer songs or something. Right. So, you know, I think there's people, a lot of people think of these like as radio, you know, like that's, but unfortunately, uh, radio is not really the dying yeah. media. Yeah. So it's kind of like, you just kind of got to learn how to, uh, sell it to people that are going to buy it and or so stream that, it. Yeah. Yeah. it's like, and you know, forget about trying to find an audience on radio, finding more just people that like buying good records and stuff. So I don't, I mean, like there's just a lot of that, but it's hard, you know, that's easier said than done. Obviously it's hard to get out there without the help of radio or a different, some other outlets to play it and stuff. So it's, yeah, it's a tricky I've, business. I used to, cause I come from a, um, a marketing back. I was like, I, I graduated with mass communications and a couple of years ago, I realized I don't, I know very little about marketing <laughs> and nor do I, I really, um, want to know anymore because it's such a changing, mm-hmm. nor did I think I wanted to, to begin with. I just wanted to do graphic design. And I thought the only way to make money in graphic design was to do marketing. And so there's still parts of, I do like, um, with my day job, I still have doing branding and, and graphic design that I love, but I kind of stopped caring about the marketing as much. I'll post stuff on social media. I've sort of taken the mindset that if people want to care, they'll care. Mm -hmm. I think if you get too caught up in like what pushes the algorithm or like what is going to get people to watch and I catch myself still doing it. Like, what do I need to post? Um, I just feel like you're losing a piece of something like that's like authentic. 
Yeah. And so I've tried to stop. I think it's, I don't think it's healthy anymore to be like, what's the new way to sell the people. And I think people are going to be a part of something that I think that's the whole thing behind TikTok and everything. It's like people are going to just be a part of, but get behind and follow and like whatever they're going to follow and like, you know? And it's like, I don't think ads are going to work. I don't think worrying about how long your song is or anything like that's going to work. I think if, if it's right, it's right. And if people want to be a part of it, they're going to be a part of it. And if they don't, they don't. Mm-hmm. But you know, at the end of the day, you, if you're happy creating it, right. You know, I mean, it's still well worth it. I yeah. mean, I have fun doing what I do every single day at this point, you know, that's and all. the people I get to meet and hang out with, I'm sure. like, I'm just so happy. That's number one, man. You gotta be, you gotta be happy in your own, you know, with it, you know, happy with your own product, you know, to want to put it out there. I got to put out a, um, a very, what did we talk about the Jason Aldean thing? I got to put out a very controversial song. Oh, right, yeah. That's what I gotta do. That's the new marketing scheme. Yeah, all right. I didn't catch that Shane, You brought that up to me. And I was like, <laughs> you're probably right. You know, I don't, I, I don't know for sure, but that's, it just feels a little, you were, too, I think you're spot too on. Like to that, it seems like all this stuff is like fake outrage where it's like, they want to outrage people because then it puts them in the news. Yeah. Any, any, even bad coverage is still good coverage because it's getting your name out there more and people, people tune in like, well, I haven't even heard of this Jason Aldean guy or Morgan Wallen or whatever. And then they're like, Oh, actually I like this guy. So then like to start listening to me. Yeah. That's crazy. You know? So it's like uh, somebody wrote online the other day, uh, you know, how many nights in a row do you think Jason Aldean's going to sell out Bush stadium next year? And it's like, you know, it's like, uh, I just feel like it's, uh, for Morgan Wall and all of this turned into a giant positive. His career is bigger than ever. And, That's unfortunate. Uh, and it's, you know, it's just uh, like, it's just, <laughs> okay, uh, we'll you know, the whole, the whole, uh, business is, is wild, man. It is. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. And, and, and that's when I, f- I find myself even furthermore going towards the people who are just kind of doing their own thing, yeah. you know? And, um, cause like radio and everything is like so calculated now everything's so calculated and it's, I'll catch myself being like, what would hit radio really yeah. well? You know, what would, what would people see for this? And then I'm like, but that's not what I want. When I listen to songs, they're not well calculated songs. They're like very authentic songs. They kind of put you in a space where you didn't expect to be, you know, versus like if I turn on country radio, if I turn on, Z1077, I kind of know the space I'm going to be in. You know, I know the, the scenes. I know the characters. But you open yourself up to some of these other artists, um, independent artists, and and um, some some signed artists that are kind of in the same, still in the same mindset. It's like, you'll find yourself in these crazy places you didn't expect to be in. Yeah. And I'm like, that's what I want. I think that's kind of what's nice about some of like uh, the curated playlist on like Spotify and different mm-hmm. things like where – you can kind of get some if there's somebody you know actually putting in some thought to these uh, much like they used to do with radio djs um and it's a good way to if you can kind of get placed in something like that then like here there's going to be other like-minded people that are hearing similar song you know similar vein of music that are might you know like something like that it seems like that's kind of a a good way to go these days um and mm-hmm. make people it just seems like more people are kind of listening to stuff for uh, like a mood or a vibe. Compared, yeah, like compared party to like, music and stuff. Right, you know, they want to feel like they're in a truck and they're driving to a party right. to the, at the lake or something. Yeah. And I'm like, how cool is it though when you like find a song and you're in your living room talking to someone you love and there's like this whole story around it, but you're like so wrapped up yeah, in it. Yeah, sure. And it's so real. And you like have so many real feelings around it. I'm like, we need more of that music yeah. and less of the music that is a vibe or yeah. whatever. It's like, we need more music that like is actually like, um, evoking mm-hmm. something within us that's actually healthy and good and not perpetuating something that's not a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. I'm, am I preaching now? Am I, <laughs> I didn't mean, <laughs> I, I told myself not to get preachy or, right. or to get I judgmental. Mean, I feel it though, man. Like, like it's, I said, I went to, I was hanging with, uh, uh, Stacy's uncle, uh, my wife's uncle, and uh, I don't know, and he put on like Pandora or whatever, and it was some music playing, and he's like, and I can't remember the exact example now, but it was like, might have been like a Beatles song or something playing, and then he goes, "Who is this Queen?" or something, you know, and I was just like, mm-hmm. "What?" No, and like you know, just like, but there's people that like music is not a big part of their life at mm-hmm. all. Like for us, 
we love lyrics and we like songwriters and we like these people that make us feel and stuff. But to some people, it's just background noise. It's just something that uh, there was. I kind of like that song. Like you know, yeah. it's like and they, very indifferent. But you know, it's just like for me, I I get you know this is a huge part of my life. So when people aren't as into it as not that everybody has to be but it's just like it bothers me when people like don't appreciate something as much as i do sometimes like um so i get like you know where you're coming from like you want people to be like realize how great some of these artists are or some of these songs and things but it's like it's just yeah not, it's a, not gonna happen right but then i just hope they have something in their life yeah right. that gets them just as excited yeah. you know because that's that's the important thing is i've i've sort of come to learn that like you're right nobody like some people just don't care yeah. like and i and, the, and, and even if i want them to care they never will yeah but then i look at them and i'm like well what do they care about you know and what what are, what are what are the things in their lives that they're doing that i'm not caring sure. about at all you know right. like and there's like some things where i'm like yeah i don't that doesn't that never takes up real estate in my brain yeah. but that is a big thing to you and that's sure. actually incredibly interesting and actually like fulfilling i can see that um, so I get it, but it is frustrating sometimes when you're like, don't you see this artist is so much better than like, but I just love Morgan Wallen. And you're like, yeah. okay, <laughs> I'll let you have it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, you know, like people that, you know, like the Morgan Wallen cover me up and not the Jason version, you know, like, right. and, yeah, stuff, yeah. and stuff like that. It's like, you do realize that's a cover song, right? And like, and no, what, uh, are you talking, what are you talking about? It's becoming more more knowledge as Jason yeah. Yeah. Isbell is getting bigger, but um, right. um, you're right. Like sometimes I'll play it at, at show, like gigs and stuff, and people yeah. be Morgan Wallen. But I'm not mad about that either, honestly, because now I get to play Cover Me Up at bigger like um, bars and things like that, where it's a bigger crowd and people know it. Yeah, where I can't play other Jason Isbell stuff because they, no one would know it, and everybody'd be like, "What is this? This must be an original." <laughs> yeah. You know, and if it's, if it, this is off the beaten track here, but the funny thing is, is that, so I get a lot of, I sound like John Mayer yeah, a lot. And, uh, and that's usually during my cover gigs where I'm playing stuff in that genre, you know, or something, but it's funny. Cause I was playing this one gig and I'd play some original stuff, some Jason Isbell, some John Prine, some stuff that's like people don't know, you know, John Craigie. If nobody's heard of John Craigie, go check him out. Um, I'll play all these covers. And it's funny, this guy came up to me and I hadn't played a single. I'll, I'll play John Mayer, but because I do really like John Mayer, I just actually posted a video playing Slow Dancing in a Burning Room this morning. But um, I, so I really do enjoy him. And I think he's an amazing artist. Um, but it was funny cause I didn't play a single John Mayer song the whole gig. And this guy came up to me. He's like, so I noticed you play a lot of John Mayer. <laughs> right. And I was like, I didn't play a single John Mayer song. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just funny. Yeah. Um, but people want to hear what they want. I don't, my ADHD brain doesn't know why we're on this track anymore. So if I got <laughs> way off, um, I'm, I apologize, but yeah. it started as, I think, Cover Me Up, uh, Jason Isbell, yeah. um, Morgan Wallen. So, yeah, people, some people don't care as much about music, but sometimes when they do cover good music, it makes it easier on us local musicians who want to play good music yeah. and want people to know it. And so some people were mad and they're like, it's a Jason Isbell song. And I'm like, I get that, but now I got to play it. And people sing along, so I'm happy. I've been trying to tell, like, not again at night, I'm not claiming to know anything, but um, you're talking about like, oh, it must be an original. I've been trying to tell from my friends, like when they're doing those cover kind of gigs like that, and then they do sprinkle their originals in there, like not to just announce that this is an original, like just like, just play it. And then people see what, see how they react. I mean, I feel like if you uh, know your sound enough and you like kind of sandwich it in between two other songs, people aren't going to realize like that oh, like that one's clearly less than or something be and that must I, be the original or whatever like you know but i feel like if you immediately say this next one's an original people are like okay i'm going to go to the bathroom now it's like and unfortunately that's just how a, a typical bar it crowd, depends on the crowd but right? yeah and, and you're I, right uh, i just feel like if you don't like and then people are like man who was that and then like i was mine you know and then like it's just a, it's like a reverse psychology type of situation you know it's like can you know it's like I don't know. It's just weird. People like shut off when they, especially if in the right 
again in the right bar or whatever like sometimes people just want to hear those catchy cover songs that they know and you know, when they hear you're going to do an original they just shut off like i don't know it's yeah it's timmy strange. and i actually talk about that a lot we actually just had a conversation because i played over at i guess shout out to june's breakfast in shiloh um they have a really cool patio and and people came prepared to listen to music yeah and they were yeah, i kind of can feel the crowds that want the original music and the tables kept asking i'd play it and we talked afterwards and we're like yeah that doesn't normally happen very much and she's like you should just sprinkle them in and not say it and there'll be times I do that and people will, like you said, they'll be like, who is that? And you're like, Oh, well, let me tell you about it. Right. We could buy it right um, here. I'm like, yeah. Cause I totally agree. Like, and, um, she had a good point and, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, I mean, it definitely ma- it, it matters the crowd. Right. And it, in what kind of, how many tables and like what the table, and, you know, there's a whole, I'm sure there's an algorithm for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> That I don't know, but I think you're on, you're onto something there too. Yeah. There, there's like, there's times that you just shouldn't announce it. Cause then you're right. There's places I play where I'm like, let me, so I wrote this song and I'll people look at their, the person with a bit, yeah. I'm going to go to the bathroom. Right. Yeah. And you're like, okay, I just lost half the crowd. <laughs> you need another beer. I gotta they go wanted a, bit. you know, they wanted a, but it's not just you. I mean, Rolling I, Stones I, watched, or something. I remember I saw Tom Petty, uh, you know, years ago and for, well, good for you because yeah. some of us didn't ever yeah. get to see him before he passed, unfortunately. But I, re- I clearly have a memory of like him, to, you know, mm-hmm. the whole set list all hits, but he had a new record coming out that year. So, like, there's a middle part where he's like, <laughs> We're going to play some new songs. And you watch like the entire lawn get up and go get a beer, you know, or whatever, go to the bathroom. And so, <sighs> but it's almost like he was kind of saying, like, Here's your chance to, to, <laughs> to go and then, uh, come back we're gonna finish so he, like song. he had that vibe you know it was where he's of, like here we're gonna do this we're, uh but you know it was clear <laughs> like nobody cared about new tom petty songs they just wanted to hear the the hits and stuff so and i get i understand uh, that people but, are there to have a good time they want to hear things they know right but there's something about being at a show where somebody debuts something yeah where you see the excitement in them Right, because this is something they get to play that's new for them and I mean, if you're somebody who plays a song a thousand times if people always ask me, well, what's your favorite song to play? I'm like, the, the newest song I learned. Yeah. Because I didn't, I haven't played it a thousand times, you know? And so for these artists who play their own stuff, it's like, yeah, they get new some stuff out. I want to see them play their new stuff because right. they're excited about it. Oh, yeah. You know, this is like still, this is like hot off the press. It's like still fire in their eyes. And um, that's exciting for me. But I understand people who are not songwriters, who aren't music lovers. And, um, that they're just like okay well i don't know this one i'm just gonna go but yeah they're missing uh, out they're missing out on that i agree man connection yeah i i'd much rather watch somebody put like saying play something for the very first time mm-hmm. and then it's fun something i've seen a thousand times yeah you want to hear it all i want to hear it all right but you uh talking about some of the cover gigs uh you do play some solo cover gigs around town and um one of those uh you may hear we did a uh, strip down acoustic uh, version of a Jason Isbell tune called "Songs That She Sings in the Shower." Right? Songs she sang. Songs that she sang in the shower. We had a whole yeah. conversation about yeah. that. She he should have dropped it. There. Yeah. But he, anyways, songs that she sang in the shower. Yeah, and I have I have a um, a cover of this on Spotify that I do. Yeah. Um, I love that song. That's an amazing and it, and to tie this into the new record, um, the song "Wish You'd Miss Me." actually references this that song because i love that song there's a line in wish you'd miss me that's i wish you'd miss me like i miss all the songs you used to sing me yeah in the sh- in your morning showers getting ready and so i i reference that and there's even oh i even go further in your in your morning showers getting ready um i'll sing your harmonies uh slow slow dancing in our birthday suits singing every is, is- bull song we yeah. knew so i like reference it like hardcore yeah um, because I love that song. So it's such a relatable song and it's, it's got, I mean, the instrumental is beautiful. Um, I try and do my best, but his version's beautiful. And, um, uh, it's, it's just a song that like hits real home for me. And, and I, I just love it. Lark on a whim, she said 
There's two kinds of men in this world And you're neither of them With his fist Cut the smoke And I had an eighth of a second To wonder if he got the joke In the car Headed home She asked if I had considered The prospect of living alone With a stake held to my eye I had to summon the confidence needed to hear her goodbyes As another brief chapter without any answers blew by The song she sang in the shower are stuck in my head Black bring out your dead Breakfast in bed Experience robs me of hope that you'll make it back home So I'm stuck on my own Well, I'm stuck on my own In a room By myself Now I'm here with a guy that I judge worse than anyone else So I pace And I pray And I repeat the mantras that might keep me clean for the day And the songs she sang in the shower all ring in my ear Like wish you were here How I wish you were here Experience robs me of hope that you'll never return So I breathe and I burn I breathe and I burn And the church bells are ringing for those who are easy to please And the frost on the ground probably envies the frost on the trees Songs you sing in the shower are stuck in my mind Like yesterday's wine Like yesterday's wine And experience robs me of hope that you'll ever return So I breathe and I burn I breathe and I burn Anybody who knows me at, at, on any level knows I'm a giant Jason Isbell fan. That's why we've mentioned him a thousand times already. <laughs> um, uh, I've never been so wrapped up in like stories of songwriters like I am in his stories. Yeah. There's something there. Like I've always had this, like, you know, like a large um, playlist of a bunch of different artists and I still do, but his are like, there's something about his writing that's just like, so it like just really pulls me in. Um, and I'm, I'm, it's doing it to a lot of other people because he's rapidly growing, um, rightfully so. Um, I don't know where I was going with this. I think I probably told you, but I, uh, I feel the same way about him. Like, and it started with, uh, for me with Southeastern. Uh, I got that, That's, oh my I got God. that record when it first came out and like, ten, and it was, it was just, 10 year anniversary now. Yeah. It was just it's like here. on repeat for a long time. And I, and it was oh, that, so and, uh, John Moreland's in the throws came out that same that, day. Yeah. Oh and man. So I was like, for me, they ha have a very similar so tone good. too. So like they kind of just go hand in hand for me always like through history. I like, if I listen to one, I want to go listen to the other too. So, um, but yeah, it was, um, he's a magnificent, magnificent storyteller, man, for sure. Like, uh, and, uh, I caught, I caught, uh, the, the reference in, the in there. And I also caught, uh, you mentioned uh, Childers and Tyler Childers you, you and uh, Dive Bar, yeah. Yeah, so you mentioned a couple of your favorites and yeah, and stuff. So it was kind of fun to hear. Uh, well, that's Tiffany's of... favorite. So I had a, it, right. in a song that's written for her. Yeah, 
I had to I had to drop her. It wouldn't say her favorite, but it's definitely one of her hers right now. Um, her favorites, and so I had to drop that one. Yeah. And I I love Tyler Childers. I I introduced her to her. Well, I don't know. I can't. I don't know if I can say that. She might get mad about that. <laughs> I was a big fan, yeah. and she won't get mad. But um, I was a big fan, and um, she started listening. And I was like, I got to relive through her finding Tyler Childers and like listening to all of his like um, his his live album and some of the other albums. Um, I got to relive like hearing them for the first time because she's discovering for the first time. And that's always fun to do yeah. when you get to like hear somebody else discovering somebody for the first time and they're falling down that rabbit hole and you're like, I get to refall down this rabbit hole and that's yeah. fun Sure, through them because they want to discuss the lyrics and then I want to discuss the lyrics and it's, it's, that's exciting. So yeah, so his name gets dropped, his boy. I think that's it. I think yeah. that's the only two songwriters I, I, I mentioned. But Dive Bar is a great tune and, uh, I had a lot of fun with that one also. And just, uh, I don't know that, <clears throat> I don't know exactly what bar you're talking about or, or thinking about when you're writing the song. But for me, especially as you said, uh, I know a bar that's open till 3 a.m. Like I think of uh, all the wild nights and st- uh, that I had down at Rodaway Oyster Bar. <laughs> and so that's where my mind goes listening to that tune. And, um, you know, there's... Uh, the two, the two, uh, I, I, Broadway Star Bar was one of the bars. The original bar that I'm talking about is 1860s. Okay. And I don't know, is it bad to call these dive bars? I don't know. Because they're both nice bars, yeah. you know, and it's like, uh, some people get offended when you say that. And I'm like, I'm not being offensive. Like, I think the, that word, that like dive bars had a lot of growth as like, yeah. far as like, it's no longer like a, crappy bar there's like a vibe to it right where sure. it's like it do, it's not sterile environment it's got character it's like there's not everything's the same you know it's like not all the seats that are the same not all the tables are the same and both those bars have that vibe you know you can go down to like the hard shell cafe or like the game room or you can go you know for 1860s but like um the saloon is what i'm specifically talking about and it's got that that vibe and uh Broadway Super Bowl is vibe, but that but that's where me and Tiffany were meeting, and she was coming to my gigs, and that's kind of like the setting. So it's funny that you, yeah. right off the bat, you mentioned it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was just uh, it's not exactly my story, but I can easily see how just the uh, you know it it's easy to do down there. It was just being surrounded by good people and good music, and drinks are flowing, and it's easy to fall in love in a, in a dive bar like that. So. Um, yeah, I actually had a, a good amount of people reach out and be like, this reminds me of me and my boyfriend or, right. you know, me and my girlfriend. I'm like, I, I mean, I that's think, what I was hoping for. I you think know? it's going to be a very, very relatable story for a lot of people and uh, something that people can apply to their own stories like that. So, uh, but yeah, I'm excited for people to hear it and get a, get start hearing some of that feedback and response from everybody. I got the little Shaney seal of approval. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's why we need those, those, uh, those stickers now. You need stickers on people's CDs. Right. <laughs> you know yeah. like approved yeah right that'd actually be kind of cool <laughs> if you'd make something that's like little shaney approved i would stick those on yeah. my cds <laughs> that'd be awesome uh, all right I'll i think it. there's a there's a co-op there i'll do it for you okay cool uh wow. again august 28th uh, the record be available on all your streaming platforms uh visit uh andrew doll music is that right andrew um yeah what, what is it like um Andrew Dahl is just where you find, just if you search my name on streaming platforms and then social media, it's like Andrew Dahl on Facebook, Andrew Dahl Music on Instagram. <laughs> is it what? AndrewDahl.com. Oh, just .com. Okay. I was thinking, all right, it's hard to keep them all straight. Everybody's got to. I got it. I, there's yeah. like probably 12, 13 other Andrew Dahls on this planet. And I, but I you own, got the dot com. I own AndrewDahl.com. Yeah, I did that is. early on. Uh, yeah, it's funny. Uh, like, um, I listened to a lot of comedy podcast and it's always like you know whatever their name andrew doll comedian.com or you know whatever and it's like they always have to put that because somebody usually, else yeah it. usually a realtor or something you know something like that or whatever or something somebody else it. beat them to it and so they always ask like you know do you know who has the uh usually it's their like twitter handle too like uh the that'd be like one that's usually somebody already beat you to it and mm-hmm. um but yeah it's just funny to think about those other, all the other the, random Andrew dolls around. 
I have, yeah. The, the funniest story about Andrew Dahl is that when I first started doing music, it was the first time I started carrying what showed up on the internet with Andrew Dahl. There's apparently got Andrew Dahl, the mucus man. <laughs> and he grows these ginormous, like <laughs> mucus filled, like, what would you call them, like boils? Okay. And he pops them on. And so I had to deal with that for a while. Cause I was like, I'm not the bu- music man. I'm the music man, not the mucus <laughs> man. <laughs> and so finally I, I think I'm up there on the ranks that yeah. I'm like, it's finally me for a little bit. There's like some other people that are pretty successful. I'm rooting for all the Andrew dolls in yeah. this world. So I'm not trying to scoot them all off the, off the first page, but I think mucus man is kind of dropping. So I'm, 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 I'm happy about that. Right. The other ones can stay. I don't care. There is apparently, uh, at least uh, he was in the area. I don't know if you're for sure or not. I don't, I don't keep in contact with him, but there was another Shane Presley, like just down the road from me. <laughs> and we frequent the same, like, I guess he used to work at the QT by my house. And so when they learned my name, uh, what, I don't know if whatever they, uh, if I showed him my ID or whatever it was, but something like that. So now it's like an insult. Now it's like a running joke there. Like every time they see me, they always have to say Shane Presley. They always say my full name because uh, they get a kick out of it that they know the other Shane Presley that used to work there and stuff. So it's like, um, but I don't. I haven't met him yet. But there's, it's funny that uh, the just that's especially how the you know how close we are uh, that he's. You know, that is kind of funny. Yeah. Um, and apparently he got in some somebody. Uh, my wife works for the police department, and Uh-oh. we were out of town. And they ran the name uh, for a speeding ticket or whatever, okay. something like that. And uh, but they were like, "Hey, is she got a text from one of her coworkers? Like, <laughs> hey, is somebody using your vehicle while you guys are out of town or something?" And she's like, uh, "No." And she's like, "Well, we just had ran a, a Shane Pratt and like, and that's what happened to be the other one." But it was just funny that again, like, that's like the really the only uh, you know miss. Uh, uh, identification yeah, misidentification I've had with him was like is that those two things but so it just kind of makes me laugh that there's like this other Shane Presley uh, just running around yeah right that's funny so I wonder how many times he gets asked about his podcast or you know or something like that yeah, yeah. so well there's also because I mean I've googled your name before you know and there's also like a baseball player I think there's like a football player oh yeah yeah you got some Shane Presley all right you know I don't know. I didn't know that. I'll have to go. I'll have to go Google. You have to go Google, Google yourself. Yeah. It, it, don't say that in public because yeah. it sounds weird. <laughs> right. Don't Google yourself. All right. <laughs> uh, it's a weird uh, statement. What do uh, now? Uh, you know, we're gearing up for this release. Are you planning um, planning to throw a party or what? Uh, what do you think? Um, about that? I, I am. I don't. I don't. I don't have anything set in stone. Yeah. I think we, the band, and I have set a date. And that's as far as we've gotten, mm-hmm. um, because I've got, there's a lot going on, and I need to I need to get on that. Yeah. I need to I need to do that. I need to buckle down. There's new merch in the works with the new out. Al- like the album art is based on a sketch I did of a guitar, and you can see it actually on like the um, album release page on the website where it like shows you the original sketch and then like how I like pulled out my original sketch and let the whole thing collapse on itself, and that's the album art. Um, cause I like basically did a bunch of like, um, like strokes around it that create all these lines and then like pulled the, my original sketch out and then it like, it like collapsed on itself. I let it do that. And then it, like that created this, like, what would you call it? Like a geode sort of like image. And I was like, this is cool. Yeah. And, um, there's a lot in that, that, um, I could apply like my, um, context to, but I'm just going to let other people kind of like apply what what they want to what that means but um there's a lot of things in that and um i've got merch with that original stuff and and the dog logo that i've revamped for the new album and some cool stuff nice man that's my that's my commercial yeah (laughs) you you foresee uh celebrating this record uh with all the guy, all the players from the, from the we've got the whole band yeah. from the of the original tracks. Nice. So I'm excited. It's gonna be a good. It'll be a good time. I gotta get on it. I gotta get a, a venue. Yeah, and I gotta sell some tickets. 
Well, let's, uh, well, let me know and I'll be sure to uh, tag it all on here. Uh, and spread, you're gonna get a spread personal, the good word. You're going to get a personal invite. All right. Appreciate that. I don't think you made it to the Andrew and the Dolls one. No, so. I didn't make a, yeah, the Ready Room show. I did not. Uh, Any Andrew Doll show that ever happens ever in the future, you're invited. You're yeah. on the guest list. Okay. Yeah. You just you just show up. All right. Well, thank you. You just say Shane Presley, and then yeah. I'll be like, I'll be like, oh, Elvis Presley's son? Yeah, let him. Yeah. Let him. And I'll be like, he knows Elvis Presley's son? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's 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 mutually beneficial all right yeah just put it uh put it right there on the guest list uh so they know um uh, but yeah man i uh i'm excited about it like i said this i uh, really enjoy the record um and uh sound, yeah thanks for giving it a listen you know? yeah i had twice uh, wow i, I, I got it. twice yeah. okay you're a busy uh, man yeah i uh yeah. but yeah give me i got an hour drive down here so it's, it gives me plenty of time to to give it a spin again uh, so it was, it was fun to listen to again on the way over and um but yeah really enjoyed and jason mcintyre crushes it every time the guy's a he's a, so good a wizard behind the board so he's he's uh, got like it, something will be just slightly off and he'll like walk to the other side of the room and just like push the tiniest little dial <laughs> and push and then go to the other side of the room and push a little button and that's perfect yeah i'm like oh, what like that would take me days to figure out <laughs> yeah yep. there's so many buttons and dials in here yeah he's uh one of the best man uh so it sounds great uh just really uh that guy's got some stories too yeah you know he's he's a good time he's a he's a good hang yeah you know you can there's a lot of great musicians around it's tough to find some people that are just good hangs sure you know i i mean i kind of talked about in the past like that's a big one it feels like that's a big part of choosing the right studio is the people that you, you know finding that right producer and atmosphere and, and atmosphere that you just like this is a fun atmosphere to hang and uh, we can you know you feel comfortable enough to to create and you're you know. on the clock but it doesn't feel like you're on the clock right <laughs> yeah, yeah for sure it really comes through man and i just like i said this, this record sounds really nice and i'm excited to for everybody else to give it a spin so again uh you got your uh uh keep an eye out 28th we'll have a couple more singles coming on soon um but uh you can find all things Andrew Dahl on Facebook, Instagram, and andrewdahl.com. But uh, thanks, buddy. No, Appreciate thanks for having me. This, man. this was fun. Yeah, really good time. Really good catching up with you, and uh, let's do it again soon. Let's not, yep. make, let's not make it uh, three years in between. Uh, I know. We had yeah. so much to talk about. Like We just yeah. keep talking. Yeah. We have to do this more often so we can stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All thanks, right. buddy. Bye, everyone.